let's go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this gift of love. Open our hearts this evening to hear the message of hope, of peace that this child brings in a world that is anything but peaceful, and how we can truly celebrate on this cold, dark winter's night, a beautiful night with snow on the ground, a night that reminds us of the beauty of your son's birth for us. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, of all the holidays we have during the calendar year, Christmas is one that I would have to call a high-effort holiday. Now, not all of them are high-effort holidays. You know, we have lots of lower-effort ones, like, oh, Labor Day, for instance. How much effort do you make on Labor Day? Hardly any, I would think. In fact, we often really go all out and celebrate these holidays by doing nothing. And that's okay. As I get older, I appreciate that. Not working. Maybe you'll have a nice meal together or a cookout. Now, we do have some middle effort holidays like the 4th of July. There's a little bit of decorating. Many families will hang out a flag. Perhaps you'll go to a parade or take your kids to a fireworks display, or shh, light off some of your own in the backyard. But then, there's Christmas. Christmas is a high-effort holiday. It requires the most decorations, planning, gift exchanging, shopping. Then there's the food, which I love, and the school Christmas program, among so many other things as well. Christmas is a high-effort holiday, but Christmas is more than just decorations and gifts, and I think all of us here tonight realize that. Christmas is something much, much deeper. It's something a lot more meaningful than a bobblehead doll, or the latest, I checked, they still, still do make these, the latest rendition of the Chia Pet <laughs> that you might find beneath your tree. Okay then, what is Christmas all about? You hear the same kind of things every year. It's about family. It's about kindness. It's about charity. It's about loving and giving to others. Yeah, those are all great things, but there's more to it than that. In fact, the things I just mentioned, they're meant to be year-round things, every day. You see, we're called to love our family love our friends, to be kind to others every day. Like the Grinch found out, there has to be a little bit more. So what is it? Christmas is that one time a year when people make an extra effort to find real meaning, joy, purpose in their life. This is when many people make that effort to look deep into the heart of God himself. Maybe this is the year, some will say, when I'm finally going to be able to see God, to understand what he's up to, to find real joy, to find real meaning in my life. Maybe this is the year when I will get a glimpse into God's heart and how any of that makes a difference in my life today. I think Christmas Eve is the perfect time to look directly into God's heart and see where do you and I fit into that picture. And tonight we see it in the most unexpected of places. Think back for a moment to the time when Jesus was born. Just imagine for a minute what Mary saw that night. The world around her was very chaotic. People were traveling back to their hometowns to register for the census so Caesar could then tax them. Mary was one of the people on the move. All that hustle and bustle, everybody was out. There were so many travelers that when Mary and Joseph got to the little dinky, dusty spot on the road called Bethlehem, there was no room at the inn, the one place they could stay. Well, that meant they would have to spend the night out in a stable or a cave. There, 
in the cold darkness of that winter's night, Mary gives birth to Jesus. But no one really notices. No one really cares. Now, it's not that people were uninterested in God. It's just that to most people, a poor couple giving birth to a baby out in a little cave or stable somewhere doesn't seem to have a lot to do with God. The world hasn't changed all that much. We're still in a hustle-bustle place. Try going to Costco any time in the last week or two. Everyone's busy. Does that mean that people today are not interested in God? No. Because no matter how busy your life is, deep down, there's that desire to look into the heart of God. That's why you see so many faith systems, why you see such a growing interest in things spiritual in our world today. People are wondering, what is in the heart of God? But for many, the search is unsuccessful. The spiritual book they found was interesting, but it wasn't the answer they were looking for. The shows we see on TV, well, they're heartwarming, they're nice, they don't always give us that glimpse of God we're seeking. Um, many people I have found will leave the holidays a little down or even disappointed. And they just don't know why. Perhaps it was because they were looking for God, but they just didn't find Him in the places where they were looking. So this evening, I'd like you to walk into a stable to stand next to Mary and see what she sees. Well, she sees a baby, but um, it's much more than just a baby. She remembers the promises that God had made about this baby. And as she recalls those promises and stares directly into the face of her firstborn son, she suddenly realizes she is staring into the heart of God. He's right there in front of her, human, caring, waiting to be loved, waiting to love others. Oh, and then the scraggly shepherds arrive from out the fields. They tell her what the angel had said to them as they were out in the fields with their sheep. They then crowd around that manger and gaze directly into the face of the baby, as they do they realize that they are looking directly into the heart and the very soul of God. The angels were right. God had come to dwell with His people face to face. Now as quickly as the shepherds came, off they went. Mary ponders all of these things in her heart. Everything her world needs is right here. Everything that her hustling and bustling friends and neighbors could ever ask for is lying in that nature. The key to understanding God, the key to finding purpose and meaning in life, the key to everything is right here, lying in the manger. Then, Mary lifts that baby out of the manger and gives him to you. There you stand, awkwardly, holding the Son of God in your arms. As you look down directly into His face and bright eyes, you realize you're looking into the heart of God. In your arms, you're holding what everyone is looking for. While the rest of the world runs from one spiritual guru to another, channel surfs from one Christmas special to the next, while the rest of the world reads spiritual book after spiritual book and sings about chestnuts roasting over an open fire and snowflakes. They're wonderful songs. But they're desperately looking for meaning, for joy, and wondering, where is God? There you are. In the quiet of a cold winter's night, away from all of that hustle, bustle, and craziness, you look at the heart of God Himself. Why? Why would 
the Almighty God do something like this, you ask? The ruler of the universe, squeezing himself into a seven-pound, six-ounce baby boy. Why? But then you look outside the stable, and you see a shadow. It's a bright night. The stars are all out. And there's one star in the sky that seems to be shining especially bright. But you also see a growing shadow. The shadow of a cross. And then you understand. Someday God would stoop down even further than he did tonight. Tonight we see God sink into human form. But someday God would sink even lower. Suffering. Dying on a cross. You can't help but feel a little bit sad as you look into the eyes of this child you're holding, knowing that he's going to die someday. But you also cannot help but feel glad because you know that after this child gives his life on the cross, you know of Easter. You know that he's coming back from the dead. The baby you are holding would one day set this world free from its brokenness. You cannot help but smile and feel an inner joy. Because of this baby, all of your mistakes in life have been taken away. Because of this baby, God loves you. He calls you his child. He calls you by name. And he says, I am going to walk with you in every step you take in life, today, tomorrow, until the day you see me face to face. This baby offers you eternal life with God in heaven that no one, nothing, can take away from you. So after lovingly staring into the eyes of this gift from God to you, you give the baby back to Mary. But before you walk away from that stable, you take one last long look. Because tonight, you see God's love for you. His mercy. His forgiveness. His wisdom. Tonight, God has touched you with something better than an angel. You rejoice. Because you know that God isn't just out there somewhere far away. He's a God who's right here. You don't need to drift and wander down endless paths searching for God meaning somewhere in your life because God has come looking for you. Tonight, He has found you in that stable. So as you walk away from the stable this evening, ponder these things in your heart. Enjoy the holidays, and yes, even enjoy the hustle and bustle and craziness. Do you know why you can actually enjoy that? Because you don't need to find deep meaning in those things. The gifts, the gatherings, they're actually all blessings that God has given us to enjoy. So we enjoy those things, but beyond that, we rejoice. Because apart from those things, God has found us, and God has brought us meaning, purpose, and joy tonight. We have held the baby Jesus in our arms tonight. Tonight, we have looked into the face of the infant Jesus, and we have seen the very heart of God. In our newborn king's name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all of our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. At this